grace be unto you and peace. Peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear fellow recipients of the blessings of the gospel of Jesus Christ and sharers of that gospel, as we work together as pastors and members to spread the saving name of Jesus throughout the world. Dear friends, did you know that the month of July is one of the most exciting months in our synod? I say that because it's usually in the month of July that many of the graduates of our seminary and Martin Luther College are installed into the office of the public ministry for the first time as pastors, as teachers, as staff ministers. And, and that brings excitement. It also brings expectations. Young pastors and teachers have exciting expectations about the work they will do in the congregation to which the Lord has sent them. And members also have exciting expectations of the work that their new pastors and teachers will do for them and with them. And that's exciting. But what should newly installed pastors and teachers and members expect from one another as they work together in the gospel work that the Lord has given us to do. Well, in the gospel lesson for today, we hear how Jesus sent his disciples on their first mission trip. And when he sent them on that first mission trip, he clearly told them what he expected from them and what they should also expect when they went out with the gospel message. And that's what we want to talk about this morning. As we gather together as fellow believers in the kingdom of our Lord, we want to talk about the gospel ministry this morning and the gospel expectations that our Savior gives to us as we work together, whether we're a pastor, teacher, or member of St. Paul Lutheran Church. Now last week we heard about the kind of reception that Jesus received in his home congregation when he preached a sermon there. Unlike St. Paul Lutheran Church in Lake Mills, which usually gathers their door offering for a son of a congregation when he preaches his first sermon here as a way to encourage him in that preparation for the pastoral ministry, Jesus' home congregation wanted to throw him off a cliff after his first sermon. I can well imagine that the last thing that the disciples were expecting after Jesus was rejected in his hometown, that Jesus would now send them out into other areas to preach the word of God. But that's exactly what Jesus did. But before sending out his disciples on that first mission trip, he told them what he expected from them, or we might say ministry expectations. Mark writes... Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and, and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. And whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. Now, now here's kind of a technical thing that we often say. Uh, this, this reading is really kind of a descriptive part of God's word. In other words, uh, through this, the Holy Spirit describes to us what happened when Jesus sent his disciples on that first uh, mission trip. Uh, it's not a prescriptive part of, uh, of Scripture. In other words, this, is what, this does not apply to all servants of the gospel in the church at all times and in all places. But we can learn some important things from these words. You see, Jesus' point was not that his disciples would be beggars or paupers. But what he did expect from them is that they would completely trust him to provide all that they needed for the work that they would do. And so Jesus said to them when he sent them out, 
He said, I don't want you taking a lot with you. I don't want you packing suitcases full of suits. I don't want you packing sacks full of sandwiches. I don't want you carrying a safe crammed with cash. I simply want you to go, and the only thing I want you to worry about is preaching the word, trust me to take care of the rest. And how did Jesus take care of his disciples on their mission trip? Well, he didn't miraculously send a raven with bread to feed them like he did for the prophet Elijah. And he didn't turn a poisonous spot of stew into good food with a handful of flour so that Elisha the prophet and a hundred seminary students could have something to eat. He didn't, he didn't do it that way. But he did it in a miraculous way nonetheless. He provided for his disciples through the people who would hear and receive their message. And so when it comes to the gospel ministry, these are the expectations we should have. We should have this expectation that in his own time, in his own way, God will send the messengers of the gospel that are needed. And then we should also expect that those who hear and receive the word will use their resources to support that gospel ministry. Those are gospel expectations for the ministry. So, let me ask you this. Haven't you experienced the Lord's providence in your own home? I mean, when, when there are things to do, hasn't the Lord provided for that work? He may not always give us what we want, but he'll always give us what we need. We should expect that the Lord will do no less for his own home. In other words, he will provide what is necessary to carry forward the work of the ministry. Now consider this, and this is an amazing thing. At this time, the Lord has provided for St. Paul three full-time pastors, 13 teachers in our Lutheran elementary school, over a dozen staff people to support them in that work, and dozens and dozens and dozens of volunteers sitting here. And then when you think of, think of the work that we do together with our fellow believers in Lakeside and, and throughout the Synod, the Lord provides scores and scores of other pastors and teachers and staff ministers and missionaries and the question we ask, how in all the world are we going to support all of those gospel servants? Well, you know the answer. The Lord will provide. And he always will. He always has. And so this morning, I would like publicly to acknowledge this. That over the years... The Lord has enabled you, the members of St. Paul, graciously and generously to take care of the gospel servants he has given you. And we thank you for that. And, and I want to say this personally, too. These sometimes are difficult words to talk about and to teach because I serve in the public ministry of the Lord. But did you know... Or did you forget? I'm a member of this congregation. Pastor Tom Haven, Pastor Nass are my pastors too. And the teachers that serve in our classroom, those are messengers of the gospel that, that I support too. We consider it a great privilege to be able to serve here at St. Paul. And we consider it a special blessing to work in a congregation where you, the members, we don't look upon our working relationship just as a business arrangement or just some basic human relationship. What a joy it is to know that God brought us together in a miraculous way and that our relationship is sacred and wholly established by the Lord. So... May we continue to trust that as the years go on, 
that the Lord is going to provide the messengers of the gospel that are needed. And let us also expect and trust in the Lord that he will always provide the resources to support those messengers in their work. But there are more expectations that Jesus brought to his disciples' attention. He continued, If any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. The most important thing that Jesus expects from the messengers of the gospel is that they be faithful in presenting God's word, both law and gospel. However, Jesus told his disciples that they shouldn't expect that everyone is going to receive and accept the message that they bring. Someone rejected. And when that happened, what did Jesus expect? He didn't expect his disciples to change the message to satisfy what people wanted to hear. He didn't expect them to use some other kinds of tricks or treats to win them over for the kingdom of God. No, they were to be faithful in proclaiming the word even if people rejected it. And when people did reject it, all they were to do is to give testimony that those who reject Jesus and his word will have to answer to Jesus for that on Judgment Day. Sadly, not everyone is going to accept and receive the message of God's word that we bring to them here in the Lake Mills area and around the world. There will be those who will reject that word. Jesus tells us here and elsewhere that we should expect that. And when that happens, what should we do? Again, Jesus does not expect that somehow we're going to change the word of God or soften it or somehow use some other kinds of tricks and treats to win people over for the kingdom of God. Uh, in the end, that doesn't really work, and in the end, it truly is wrong. Jesus wants, to be faithful, wants us to be faithful in proclaiming the word regardless of how it is received. And then if someone rejects it, simply give the testimony that they will have to answer to Jesus for that on Judgment Day. On the other hand, the good news is this, that there were those who did receive the disciples and the message they brought. They experienced gospel victories. They drove out demons. They healed the sick. And people, by God's grace, received and believed the message. Yes, those who use the word of God, who wield that sword of the Spirit, should expect that by God's grace there will be some who will hear and believe and be saved. And so it is with us here at St. Paul. We should expect that when we proclaim the powerful word of God, there will be those gospel victories, and I can prove it. All of you sitting here this morning are evidence of it. Through the word that someone brought to you in your life, God won you for his kingdom. You are evidence of the power of God's word. And working together, we experience other gospel victories. Let, let me share these statistics with you. Since January 2021 through June of 2021, we have had nine babies baptized at that baptismal font. We have had 22 young people confirmed in the Lutheran faith. And 19 adults received into membership, either by adult confirmation or by profession of faith. <laughs> Those are gospel victories. Last week, another baby was baptized. Next Sunday, another baby is going to be baptized. Currently, 10 adults are taking adult instruction class with the pastors. And there's a large group of people waiting in line to start that class this coming fall. All of these are evidence of God's grace to us and a reminder that we should expect 
that when we are faithful in proclaiming God's word, preaching repentance, that is showing people that they need a savior through the law by exposing their sinfulness, but then also comforting them with the good news that they have a savior in Christ Jesus our Lord. When we are faithful in proclaiming the word of God, we can expect that by the grace of God there will be those gospel victories and all the glory belongs to our God. Now one of the things that I often teach people about the blessings of regular church attendance is this. There is a blessing, a special blessing, if you were able to come to church every Sunday throughout a year if you were to come to church 52 Sundays in a year, did you know that through the assigned lessons that we use, you will have had a chance to review every major doctrine in God's Word? That's a review that all of us need. And today's lessons are an example because through the lessons that we read today, Jesus taught us some important lessons about the gospel ministry, those who serve in it and those who are served by it. And what did we learn? We learned that we can expect some things. First of all, we learned that we can expect that the Lord of the church will send gospel messengers where they are needed, and he will provide for those messengers through his people. And then we also learned that when God's word is proclaimed in its truth and purity, there will be those who will brought, be brought to faith, who will believe in Jesus, and who will join us in heaven. So, dear friends, when it comes to our gospel ministry here at St. Paul, let's expect that. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord.